Hi everyone, Adam here. In this video, we are going to identify an athlete's strengths and weaknesses. And in prior videos, we did a couple of things. We determined the metrics in our database that we wanted to be considered as strengths and weaknesses, which are here. We got the values for the testing session that we select for the athlete that we select here in these values. And then we determined the percentile ranks taking into consideration whether a lower value is a better value, um, for lack of a better term, and also considering whether a higher value for that metric is a better value. Now in this video, we are going to simply identify the top two and the bottom two values for the percentiles. That's the reason why we calculated the percentiles, was to get top and bottom values and to also give some text or description associated with the strengths and weaknesses area and we can use the percentiles to do that because a lot of people understand what percentiles are so we can communicate them more effectively than we could communicate uh, a score that is has a lot of behind the scenes details that might be important for our interpretation of information okay let's start with the strengths so let's create an area for two strengths, and you could have as many strengths or as many weaknesses as you want to show up. Here, we're going to go strength one, and we're going to say strength two. And to determine a strength, this is an important thing for you to think about, and you're probably sensing a common theme throughout these videos in that a lot of, I can help you with the calculations, but a lot of the things you're going to have to think about so that you're interpreting the information in a way that makes sense to you or so that you're getting the information that's most appropriate for the way that you want to see it. In my opinion, there are, are two important things to consider um, for the top strengths. The first is they need to be the highest values, right? They need to be something that the person excels at most. Um, and we decided to do our percentile based on where the person is relative to the rest of the population for that testing session. But these percentiles might be the percentile of that person relative to their historical performance, where you're considering a strength as being relative to themselves or relative to a position group or whatever it might be. So with all of that aside, the strength has to be a high value or one of the highest values. And it probably has to be not only one of the highest values, but someone could have all their percentiles below the 50th percentile which means that they're not very good at anything and relative to the population at least and you'll want to consider whether you want that to be a strength or not for example if a person's in their highest percentile is the 35th percentile do you want that to show up as a strength or do you not and that will kind of dictate how you go about the rest of this but for me I'm going to do strengths as they have to be greater than the 50th percentile to be considered a strength and a weakness. It has to be below the 50th percentile or below average, the median, to be a weakness. To start, let's go equals large. Large. So what does large do? And let's open a parenthesis. What large does is that you give it some data and you tell it the number that you want to get the largest value of and that didn't make any sense the way that I said it now that I'm saying now that I'm thinking about it but pretty much you give it the data and you say and you give it a number let's say you want the number two then it'll give you the second largest value in that data set if you give it the number three it'll give you the third largest so on and so forth so for our data set we want to get anything from p36 colon p so p and beyond and comma for the number we want the first strength so let's get the number one for the top the highest value and close the parenthesis and click enter now that's great the highest value is one and that's true right one is the highest value of all of these if we copy what we have here and you don't do this just watch me do this and we paste it below and we change the number to two and close the parenthesis and click enter now we have the second largest value and we see that here, right? 1 and then 0.978 and then 0.909 would be the third and so on and so forth. 
But if we want to only consider values that are above the 50th percentile, we need to add some criteria. So this is, let's make this large. Let's make it number uh, five. So it's below the 50th percentile. And we'll add a condition in here. We want to get the large of that data when, let's do a filter, filter, open parenthesis, and our range is, and we'll put dollar signs around this, P36 to P, comma. So we want to get the large value, or the fifth largest value from P36 to P, comma, when P36 to P, or our data, is greater than 0.5, and close the parenthesis, and click Enter. And as we would expect, we get an error because we don't have a value that's greater than 5. In other words, the fifth largest value is not greater than 0.5. So we don't get a value here. So that's great, right? Because we don't want to consider it as a strength. We change this large value back to 1. Click Enter. Now we get the largest value. So that's a way for us to protect ourselves from considering something a strength that is not above the 50th percentile. The last thing that we'll do with this formula is we'll add in an if error. So if error, open parenthesis, if there's an error with anything going on in here, what do we want to happen? Do comma, quote, quote, or blank, close the parenthesis, and click enter. Great, now we have the value for the best or the biggest strength. And if we copy this formula and paste it here, and change this number, Instead of getting the largest value, we want the second largest value. We change this to 2 and click Enter. Now we've identified the second or the value, the percentile of the second largest strength. And now what we can do is we can copy the formulas that we have here and paste them right here. And we'll call these weaknesses. So we'll say weakness 1 and weakness 2. And the only thing that we have to change is instead of using this formula called large, we can use a formula called small, which does the inverse of large. Instead of getting the largest value, it will get the smallest value. And we actually have to change two things, so I'm sorry about that, but we'll go small instead of large. And this time we want it to be less than or equal to 0.5. So we're only considering values that are less than 0.5. And if you notice, if we turn it back to greater than, we see this is the smallest value that is greater than 0.5 because we have the greater than sign there. And when we look at our data, 0 0.436, 0 0.46, 0 0.688, that is the first, that is the smallest value that is greater than 0.5. But let's change this to less than or equal to 0.5, so we're getting the smallest value in our entire data set, which is 0.295, which is right here. You can click Enter. And now let's copy that formula and paste it to our second weakness and change the number one to a two. So we get our second biggest weakness and click enter. And the last thing that we're going to do in this video is get the metrics that associate with these values that we identified so that we can get the actual metrics that are the biggest strengths and weaknesses. And to do that, we can use index and match, which we've used so many times already, but let's use it again. So to get the metric that associates with this value 1, we can say equals index, open parenthesis. What do we want to bring back? Well, we want to bring back one of our metrics. So let's pick N36 colon N, and let's lock this in. So we're looking for something in column n, comma, oops, comma. Now what row do we want to get? That's the big question. We want to get the row of whatever row this value is in. So in this case, we want to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because the number 1 is in the fifth row of our range, and that is body fat. So we want body fat to come back here. So let's use a match. Match, open parenthesis. We want to match this number, comma, to the numbers in our percentile. So P36 colon P, and we can do a dollar sign, oops, wow, dollar sign P, dollar sign 36, dollar sign P. And let's actually lock in this 
column here and do comma zero because it has to be an exact match. And now we can close off the parentheses and click enter. And we have the metric that aligns with that value. Adam here jumping in to interrupt. I made an oversight on this video and one thing that might come up is you might have the exact same percentile rank for two different metrics and they might both be for example if an athlete um, is the best at two things or they're in the hundredth percentile two different metrics they might both equal to one or most both might be equal to one and if we don't consider that then only one of them will be considered a strength so I just wanted to hop in and show you how to accommodate for when multiple metrics have the same percentile rank. And whether or not this is the case will depend on, or it could be the case, will depend on how you decide to aggregate your metrics or how you decide to calculate your percentile ranks or what conditions they're based off of. So what we have here is we've identified strength one and strength two. What we're going to do is we're going to change strength to, or let's just copy the formula that we have and paste it here, and it'll work fine. That's the one that we currently have. But if we change this value to be 0.821, don't do this, just watch me do it. Now we're going to get the same metric twice. The way that we account for this is by using the filter function. The first strength, or the biggest strength, we don't really have to worry about. It's the second one that we do. The same thing with the weaknesses. The first one we don't have to worry about, but everyone thereafter we do. For example, if you have three, four, five strengths or three, four, five weaknesses, then you'll want to apply this formula that we're doing to strengths two through five or weaknesses two through five, anything but the first one. The reason for that is because what index does is it finds the first value that matches the criteria, essentially. What this formula does is it finds the first thing that matches. So we're looking through n36 to n um, that matches up with 0.821, and we find 10 meter sprint. And then we do that again here, and again we find 10 meter sprint as the first one. The second one is body fat. The way that that you can do uh, you can get around this is by adding filter right before right after this parenthesis, sorry, in the index function, and right before this p36 to p in the match function, or defining the range in the match function. So let's add that in. And again, we don't do it for the first one, just the second one, and third, fourth, fifth, or whatever. So we'll add filter, open parenthesis, and we'll copy this n36 to n, and do comma, paste it, and not equal to whatever is above it, whatever the word is above it, and we'll close the parenthesis, and click enter. Now it says 20 meter sprint, but 20 meter sprint doesn't match up with 0.128. Let me first describe what's going on in this formula. So what we've now said is we've said we wanna look for something in uh, column N, but it can't be equal to whatever this is above it, which is 10 meter sprint. And we still wanna match this number to the range P36 to P. The reason why 20 meter sprint is showing up and not body fat, which is the right one, is showing up is because our ranges are different. Now, what do I mean? We're going N36 to N and P36 to P. The ranges seem to be the same length. But what we're not considering is that we have removed an item from the range, essentially, by saying it can't be equal to T37, which is this, which is an item in this range. So what we can do is we can change this P36 to P by match. We, if we change it to P35 to P and click enter, now we have the right item. We have body fat, which aligns appropriately. Now you could do that. You could just change this range by one, and that's fine too. I didn't even go over that. So the way that I do it, though, which is a little bit more complex, let's leave it P36 to P, just for consistency, is we can also do filter here. So we'll open filter, open parentheses, and first let's just talk about this for a second. So what we're essentially saying is we're saying let's look for something n36 to n 
but it can't be T37. It can't be whatever this is. So what we're saying is we're looking for N36, N37, N39, because it can't be 38, because that's what T37 is, or 10 meters sprint. So we're looking 3, 36, 37, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. What we essentially need to do is the same thing here, where we're saying, okay, yep, we want to look in row 36, 37, not 38, because that's 10 meter sprint, which we already have. And then we also want to look in 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, and so on. The way that we do that is with this filter again. Um, this time we're looking to match um, the value in row P, but the criteria remains the same, where we go comma, and we can copy N36 to N not equal to T37. We can paste that after the comma, close the parentheses, and click enter. And now we have the formula working right. Again, you could just change this, um, remove the filter and change it to be P35 to P if you want. But let's copy both of these formulas now, and let's paste them right here. And now we have what we were looking for. And again, if you have, let's say, strength three, you'll want to copy this formula and paste it, or the second formula in the strengths and paste it there. And if you had a weakness three, you could paste it there too, if there was a weakness three. Or four, five, six, et cetera, all of them. I'm gonna remove this now. And I just wanna test this. So the worst is 0 0.128, second worst is 0 0.226. Now let's say, all right, let's change this bra jump to be 0.128, and it works fine. The first one it sees is bra jump, and it goes in the first slot. The second one that it sees is 20 meter sprint, which is also 0.128, and it goes in the second slot. Perfect. Now I'm just going to reset these percentile formulas because I typed in some stuff manually, so you'll see a bunch of things flip around here, but I'll copy our percentile formula, paste it to the rest of them. And now we have this working fine. In the next video, we're going to add some text logic around this so that we can describe what's going on and display that on the dashboard. Pretty much tell people, hey, this person has, has a strength. They're in this percentile for it. Their second biggest strength is this. And we'll kind of go through writing text out um, so that we can describe things. One important note here is that, again, we used metrics for these strengths and weaknesses. The way that I generally do this is using the score categories that, that we developed in module three. So if you did go through those videos, you should know that, that those are options to use here, as well as any of, the, of just the metric scores instead of their raw values, which would make, if you use the metric scores instead of their raw values, which already consider whether higher is better or lower is better, then you don't necessarily have to go through this if, one minus percent rank stuff all you have to do is bring in the values and you can do a, a straight up percent rank for those values like we did at the big at the beginning of this video and that'll tell you everything that you need to know to get the strengths and weaknesses because again the lower is better and higher is better has already been determined um, because you went through module three so that's it for this video if you got something out of it make sure to give it a like and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already and you've been getting a lot of value from this content in general, please make sure to subscribe. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.